At Rex Kwando, we use the buddy system. No more flying solo. You need somebody watching your back at all times. Second off, you're gonna learn to discipline your image. You think I got where I am today because I'm dressed like Peter Pan over here? <laughs> okay, seriously now. This isn't a new Netflix movie, but it is a new movie to Netflix. The Paper Tigers is a gung fu dramedy that had made its way through some of the festival circuit. But is it worth checking out on Netflix? <laughs> Three gung fu prodigies have grown into washed up middle aged men, now one kick away from pulling their hamstrings. But when their master is murdered, they must juggle their dead end jobs, dad duties, and old grudges to avenge his death. There are a lot of reasons to like this movie. First, Yuzi Okamoto had a small role in it, which I thought was fun. The main characters, though, are slightly goofy and a mix between martial arts masters and every men. The fact that this focuses on once great fighters who are now somewhere in their 40s, I found enjoyable. The movie doesn't make them out to still be at the top of their game. They're older, slower, and certainly get winded much faster than they did when they were in their teens. There are some pretty enjoyable scenes as the trio attempts to perform moves that they did like when they were young. The reactions I think ring true as muscles are pulled and the characters have to bend over to catch their breath after about 20 seconds of exertion. There's also some good banter back and forth between the trio. Sometimes it is incredibly cheesy or it's even forced, and other times it works well. The movie starts out with a scene of an older man dying at the hands of an unknown assailant. Then it flashes back to introduce us to our main players. I like the effect of the 4 to 3 ratio and that it's all on handheld video camera footage. It's rough, shaky, and it's stitched together just as if kids were sporadically recording their exploits just as the mood struck. These flashbacks really help to show us the progression of the kids into teens from novices to expert fighters. The main plot for the story is the three friends trying to find out who murdered their old master and why. Then from there, it's kind of a reconciliation and coming to grips with limitations type of story. I mentioned that this was a dramedy. There are some comedic moments and there are also some dramatic elements, but it never sits fully in one or the other. And it's not your standard drama. This tries to be heavy, but a lot of it is lighthearted and missing the real weight of a deep and impactful drama. The pace of this hour and 48 minute movie is pretty uneven. There are a lot of scenes that have unnecessary downtime. Scenes take too long to resolve or ultimately don't lead us anywhere important. And I think this could use another round of editing to tighten it up, which would not only shorten the runtime, but also increase the impact of the conflict. And while I liked what the story was trying to accomplish, it seems to get lost a bit in what it feels is the most important part of the message. Is the journey to reconcile relationships and regain honor the main focus, or is it the vague quest to find who was responsible for the death of the master? I think the arc of the characters regaining honor is much more interesting and gratifying for the story. And while the quest to find the killer does contribute some towards regaining honor, the story is better served by the actions and then conversations of the main players, especially in interactions with the central character Danny and his young son. Also, each of the characters shares some of their last encounters with each other and with their master, which all leads to areas where the characters grow after recognizing their shortcomings. When the story focuses on this, I think it's done well. There are a lot of distractions with side characters and issues that do add some cheesy humor, but they also add slowness to the overall story. Some of the fight sequences are choreographed and filmed really well, but the majority of the cinematography and just the look of the film overall has a lower budget feel to it. It's missing the grain or at least like some good color correction that would make it more film-like in quality that you see in more of the polished productions. And while this isn't bad for a casual watch because some of the characters are just so charismatic and likable, the story drags and it takes too long to get to its resolutions, making the entire film more of a chore than a joy. I appreciate what the story is trying to accomplish, especially with the redemption the characters experience, but overall, this isn't going to be something that I revisit again. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give The Paper Tigers two and a half out of five couches. So who's looking forward to season four of Cobra Kai? The teaser recently came out and I just can't wait to see what this new season brings. Let me know if you're a fan in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris, this is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.